Hi folks, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review and this time we have the latest special issue. I can't even get this ship in frame. The box is freaking huge. But we finally, finally have Spock's jellyfish ship from, yes, the reimagined Star Trek. So this has been, um, this was confirmed a long, long time ago. And we started seeing some uh, preview shots from then. And uh, it's great to have it here. I picked it up in the Black Friday sales as well. So it got a good value on it. And it was pretty speedily delivered as well. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. It's a bit late coming out because I've been a bit ill lately. Um, you can probably hear that in my voice. Um, but hopefully that won't impact uh, the recording of the video. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of an odd frame here. I just I can't get it in frame any other way so i'm going to do my best to open it up and uh, we'll have a look at the magazine first and then um have a look at this humongous box if we can <laughs> um so yeah special time special time big ships yay so i'm going to fast forward or just cut to when i get the magazine because this is going to be awkward as hell so Finally got her out of the bag. Um, magazine looks in really good condition and the box doesn't have anything. So hopefully, I haven't even opened the box yet, but hopefully the box is fine. And you can probably see a Thunderbird over here as well, but that's for another day. <laughs> um, so this is Spock's jellyfish ship. It's a science vessel launched 2387. So this is the ship that um, was constructed by the Vulcan um, science directors, I believe. Um, very fast to head off to Hobus to save the Romulans. Um, but obviously, we know how that turned out. 36 meters. So, not a big ship. But still pretty decent. Would it be 36 meters? Like, look at the size of the cockpit. Is that right? 36 meters? That that, that feels small. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm completely off the bat here. Um, and red matter injector, obviously. Um, bit, very dangerous ship. Um, so, here we have the mounting instructions as well. So, I probably will come back to that. What a profile, actually. We're used to seeing it the other way around, but interesting profile. I suppose needs must for the magazine. And then we have some uh, extra detailed shots down here as well. Great modeling, actually, on that. Um, as opposed to our normal four sections, we have two. Um, profile of uh, Spock's jellyfish ship and designing the ship. So I suppose if you're going to cut two sections out, these are the two best ones to leave in. <laughs> in my opinion, that is. Um, so this is an experimental class. It has phasers and torpedoes as well. Um, pilot with Spock. And Spock, I suppose. So Spock and Spock. Spock part. Sp Spock redone. Redux. Um, so yeah. Interest. I love the kind of subtle, almost animalistic skin texture to the, the hull of the ship as well. Very dynamic. Really cool. And then, um, obviously spinning pieces and a uh, very dynamic design um and obviously with the rotation that was the way we saw it the other way was it in its kind of landed form um so interesting ship nonetheless um so what do we have here spock took the one-man vulcan vessel to romulan star system in attempt to save the romulans yes um it was uh, designed by the vulcan science academy especially equipped to carry red matter which can create black holes and it carried a lot of red matter, didn't it? What did you think so? I thought so. That's a lovely graphic. Designing the jellyfish. Did I skip over? Is that just the profile of the ship? Okay. We're gonna have a lot about designing the ship, which is great. Um here we have the kind of tunnely walkthrough that we saw. Remember he had that kind of pyramid seat, which was cool. Um Spock's ship was unlike anything we'd seen before, an organic Vulcan ship modelled on a gyroscope so a lot of spinning parts yes organic i was on i was i was on the right path wasn't i intuition i'm telling you won't last it won't last now that's a different design isn't it <laughs> that's crazy the earliest designs for spock ships were produced by comic book artist brian hitch he sent several sketches to abrams who picked two which were then worked up as basic cg models by hitch's long-term friend neil bushnell um so wow that's very different isn't it i'm so glad they went with the other one <laughs> no offense 
but uh, yeah, you have to kind of build one up. I wonder which one was his personal favourite though. Um, Brian Hitch labelled his favourite design, okay, there we go, um, as a uh, Spock ship as angelfish. Um, he always intended most of the parts to rotate around a single fixed point, uh, which would later become the cockpit. Um, at this point, Hitch thought um, it would be the red matter injectors. The red matter would be the fixed point. Interesting. Class profile, it looks really amazing. So different. So yeah, very fish-like actually. And really fish-like, obviously. Uh, ooh. Nathan Schroeder uh, produced illustrations that showed a possible evolution of Hitch's initial design. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I like it, I like it. And here we have the cockpit as well. It was a real departure. I remember this scene, it was just like, Obviously, everything in Star Trek at that time was so super shiny. Um, not to everyone's liking, but, you know, I can see. Wow, it's like something out of the abyss, isn't it? Um, very fluid designs here. That's really interesting. It's almost like kind of like a double helix DNA side of things. Um, I've seen that kind of tendril, I think maybe even like Sequest, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, man, this went through a lot of iterations, didn't it? And it looks like the scaling kind of changed as well. Like this, I don't know if that was the cockpit, or just like a really large window with the cockpit just in the centre as well, being the same scale, possibly. I don't know. Um, a selection of Ryan Church's early sketches for Spock's jellyfish ship at this... Um, oh, here we are. Ryan Church's ones. Um, at this point, Church was looking at ways to develop Hitch's initial idea, but many of these designs fell too much like a real sea creature. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I think that I think that was a good call. It still has to be kind of mechanical as well. Um, as Church recalls, by the time he saw the script, Hitch's scribbles scribbled name, uh, the angel fish, had become attached to the ship. Uh, but somewhere along the lines had transformed into the jellyfish. So yeah, angelfish. Yeah, I don't know. I I think I think angelfish is a nicer name than jellyfish. <laughs> what do you think? You can see the kind of propulsion system being generated inside the rotating pieces as well, which is kind of cool. And then we have CGs and some of the kind of kind of raw concept art as well. See, everything starts from rough sketches. It's amazing, isn't it? And you can see again, going back, and I mentioned this in a lot of the most recent uh, reviews of these magazines, again, having the pleasure of talking to designers. Um, it's such a collaborative effort designing these ships as well. And you can see one person's input and the other person's input as well, um, which is very cool. Here we have her landed as well. It's almost something like out of Star Citizen also. Um, that Kickstarter game as well. Um, working out how the ship would land presented something of a challenge because it was vertical. Yeah. Um, the cockpit would have to have been long. Yeah, actually, yeah. The cockpit would have, what is it? Cockpit would have been a long way uh, to go around. Yes, I suppose. The solution was to turn it on its side. So yeah, very dynamic, which is cool. Now, I'm not going through the bulk of it like I normally don't. Um, I'd let that discovery be your pleasure. Um, but let's close out on the back graphic and let's actually try and have a look at the ship, shall we? So this is a big box. With a nice graphic though. So fingers crossed folks that the ship is fine. <laughs> I have confidence, I have confidence. Okay. Come on. It's looking good. It's looking good. Big, big plastic piece. Thirteen forty-five Spox Jellyfish Ship, two thousand nine movie. A slash A. You just get that out of the plastic, and you're probably saying, "Irish Trekkie, take her out of the box. Take her out of the box. God damn it." I'm afraid to. Oh, actually, remarkably light in comparison to the size. So let me take this box out of the way. Now, she is 
a beauty. I like her. I like her a lot. It's remarkably light. I'm just... There's the die cast. I think there's like, there's weight in this spherical part. But I don't know if there's any die cast on the outer side of it. But anyway, let's have a look at the overall um, design of the ship as well. Um, one thing that no I noticed straight away is that the globe and then like the, the kind of cockpit area aren't matched up on purpose so it gives it more of a dynamic style which I think is really cool. Um, we have it going right down like the, oh, this is this is amazing I love it it's so different it is so different so you can see the skin off the ship there just kind of the lights just dancing off her um, tonally there's maybe what one two three three or four tones across the whole body of the ship and then we have the cockpit area which has a kind of concave it's it is painted but it's almost it's like there's like a plastic component inside there if you can make that out as well but everything is very crisp the silver detailing there's no bleeds in it at all the seams are kept to the aft of the ship you can see there's some slight slight miss alignments here but nothing too crazy which is kind of it's not as bad on this side here which is actually pretty good quite dull back of the ship here obviously we don't see that hugely on the screen um very cheeky little hidden and this is going to be hard to kind of demo little plastic module in here as well which is actually quite detailed too and then the kind of base of these parts have some good molding in it as well I don't know if you can see that just in here man there's so many angles and arches and like look at these things they're like kind of pincers it's like they're going to come down and like almost like borg arms or something like that and then we have a lot of detailing then on these modules here and then going down along these rotating pieces and then like that kind of almost engine cowling in there as well every little nook and cranny has a huge huge amount of detail in it if you can see everything in there it's quite hard to kind of get everything in frame if you can see it's just like that as well it's pretty large but it's so how is this even going to mount? I'm curious. <laughs> I think it's going to grab on somewhere here. Almost. I think. Could be wrong. But we'll see soon enough I suppose. Um, we have a seam. Going down here as well. Which is pretty decent. There's nothing too crazy on that. There's no kind of flash or anything going down the side. It's been kind of sanded off pretty decently. And we have some more detail just on this inner sphere as well. But the mould is phenomenal on this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Very delicate. Oh, there's a crap ton of detailing just on the inside here. Like things where you wouldn't think there would be detailing, there is detailing. You can actually see it from the far side there as well. Which is lovely. And then even to kind of down the down here. It's almost like a scorpion's tail or something. Gorgeous really like in all fairness i was looking forward to this from the get-go when i heard it Um, i've always liked a lot not all the ships but a lot of the ships in the reboot universe but listen you know you like what you like some people don't and that's fair enough i'm not going to chastise them um but um what a bold ship to do and i'm sure this was a headache for ben and the team as well some slight separation just on the seam in here i don't know if you can kind of make it out a huge amount just in there, nothing too crazy. So, really nice. Now I'm going to put her on the stand, or attempt to. And I'm going to compare it to a normal ship. Oh, that's quite cool. That's quite ingenious. I like that. Get that wedged in there a bit. 
And I'm going to compare it to a normal ship in the line, just so you can get a sense of scale between them. So, normally I do the mounting off screen, but that went on pretty interesting. And you wouldn't think it, but man, there's a lot of that ship hangs over the front. <laughs> now, it's not my prettiest of shots, um, but it's very hard to kind of get that in frame. But um, yeah, she's cool. She's so dynamic, isn't she? It's like, how's it even sitting there as well? A lot of thought went into that. A lot of engineering went into that mount to make it sit like that. Like that now. That is class. I love it. Um, see, it's hard. I don't know what to compare. I don't know what ship to scale it to. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I know what ship to scale it to. Why not get another Vulcan ship in the mix? <laughs> and there you go. That's a normal size Eagle Moss ship side by side on a special. So you can see one just dwarfs. Oh, you get back in there, missus. <laughs> one just dwarfs the other. Um, but I'm curious to know, folks, what do you think at home? Off the Vulcan jellyfish or Spock's jellyfish ship from Star Trek 2009, the movie. And um, yeah, was it a success? Is it something that you're going to get or save up for? Because they are obviously an expensive ship. Maybe stay tuned for Christmas specials and stuff like that as well. And um, what do you think the overall scale of it in comparison to a normal ship of the line? Use the comment section below to let me know. And again, thanks as always for getting involved in the conversation. And don't forget I'm over on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as well. But um, yeah, I've been your Irish Trekkie. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Take it easy and goodbye.